Welcome to the NRMT uh, trauma assessment demonstration. This is a 10 minute station. We're gonna go through and do this assessment like you normally would for national registry practical examination. What's my scenario? Uh, 38 year old victim gunshot wound. All right, so my BSI is on. I'm checking to make sure my scene is safe. My mechanism of injury is a GSW. I appear to have one patient. I'm going to call for ALS or EMS assistance. I'm going to have my partner pull his C-spine in a neutral inline position. My general impression is a male patient lying supine on the ground. I'm going to assess for responsiveness. Is the patient alert when I walk in? No. Verbal response, sir, can you hear me? Painful response, I'm going to do a trap squeeze. At this point, this patient is unresponsive. My chief complaint is unknown. I'm going to expose my patient looking for any apparent life threats. So we would cut off his clothes. Uh, we take his pants all the way down cut them off. Um, we're going to expose them completely, looking for any apparent life threats, any major bleeds, or in this case, we have a hole in the chest. So I'm going to treat this as a sucking chest wound. We're going to use an occlusive dressing, something that's not permeable to air. We're going to put it over the uh, bullet hole, and we're going to tape this on three sides, creating a flutter valve. Is my intervention adequate? Yes. All right, good. Next thing I need to do is assess my patient's airway. So we're gonna open that airway um, using a jaw thrust maneuver. We can remove this hat. When I open the airway, uh, what do I find? Uh, airway patent? Airway is patent. Good. Airway is patent. We're going to uh, measure and insert an OPA. We're measuring from the corner of the mouth to the tip of the ear. We're gonna insert the OPA, tip towards the roof of the mouth, and as we insert it, rotate it 180 degrees. It should sit down in the patient's throat. The patient accepts? The patient accepts. Excellent. I'm going to assess my respiratory rate. So I'm going to look for breathing, uh, chest rise. What do I find? <coughs> uh, 32 and shallow. Okay, this patient's breathing 32 and shallow. Because of that, we're going to ventilate this patient using a BVM device. So I'd have my other rescuer ventilate this patient. We're going to set the O2 tank to 15 liters per minute. Make sure it's on. Turn it down tubing to the tank and we would go ahead and ventilate this patient with the BVM. Is my O2 therapy adequate? Yes. <clears throat> Circulation, I'm checking for a carotid pulse. Is my heart rate? Uh, heart rate is 148 and it's rapid. 148 and rapid, we're going to note it. We're going to check my patient's skin color, temp, and condition. Pale, cool, and clammy. We're going to treat him for shock. We're going to keep him warm by using a blanket. I'm also going to look head to toe for any major bleeds. No, right. bleeds. no major bleeds are noted. We're going to move on. So this patient's a high priority transport based on a GCS of three. I'm now going to obtain vital signs. So again, I'll start with the top of the head, checking the skin for color, temp, condition. I'm going to come down and check the pupils using a pen light. Pupils are sluggish. I'm going to reconfirm my respiratory rate. Gonna assume that his rate is not still being controlled by ventilations. Reconfirm his pulse. Okay, pulse is still rapid at 148. The other thing I'm gonna do is obtain a blood pressure. Cuff on the arm. Once I demonstrate how to obtain a blood pressure, the proctor should give me my number. 146 over 80. Okay, noted. Leave that cuff on. I'm gonna send my partner for a sample history and now we're going to start our secondary trauma assessment. Start with the head, I'm gonna check for decap, BTLS, and crepitations. Deformities, contusions, abrasions, punctures and penetrations, burns, tenderness, laceration, and swelling. So I'm checking the top of the head, front of the head, size of the head, and the back of the head for any decap, BTLS, crepitation. Any blood on my gloves? No. I'm gonna check around the face, around the cheekbones, around the nose, the upper lip, the mandible, size of the face, behind the ears, for any decap, BTLS, crepitation. I'm gonna look at the eyes, ears, nose, and mouth for any blood. I'm gonna make sure that my airway is still secured still uh, being ventilated adequately. I'm going to check for any 
uh, blood or CSF from the ears, eyes, nose. Anything noted? No. You're going to look for battle signs behind the ears or uh, raccoon eyes. We're going to come down to the neck. I'm going to check the neck for decap, BTLS, carpitation. We're going to look for any step offs. Do any blood on my gloves? No. I'm also going to look for JVD, jugular vein distension, or tracheal deviation. This time I'm going to measure and apply a cervical cuff. Check the shoulders for decap, BTLS, crepitation. Any blood on my gloves? No. Check the clavicles for any decap, BTLS, crepitation. I'm going to check the chest for any decap, BTLS, crepitation. I'm also going to look for any flail segments. I'm going to check the sternum using a chopping motion. I'm also going to look for unequal chest rise or paradoxical motion. Next, I'm going to auscultate lung sounds in six positions. We're going to start just below the clavicles, comparing one side to the other. We'll check just below the nipples. And we're going to check mid axillary. I would expect to hear diminished lung sounds on the right side based on the second chest wound, so we'll note that. We're going to check the abdomen for decap, BTLS, distension, and rigidity. We'll check the upper right quadrant, upper left, lower left lower right, and the bladder. We're going to come down and check the pelvis for decap BTLS crepitation using an in and down motion. We're going to check the genitals by using a genital sweep or performing a genital sweep. I'm looking for a priapism in males or hemorrhaging in females. We're going to check the patient's right leg for decap BTLS crepitation. I'm going to check for a pulse, motor, I'll ask the patient to wiggle his toes. Sensory, I'll ask if he can feel me squeezing. This patient's unresponsive, so we have no response. Check the patient's right arm for decap BTLS crepitation. Check it for a pulse. Motor, can you wiggle your fingers? Sensory, can you feel me squeezing? Walk around the patient. Checking the patient's left arm for decap BTLS crepitation. Check it for a pulse. Motor, can you wiggle your fingers? Sensory, can you feel me squeezing? Checking the patient's left leg. Decap BTLS crepitation. I'm checking for a pulse. Motor, can you wiggle your toes? Sensory, can you feel me squeezing? At this point, I'm going to have another rescuer come in, help me log roll the patient. We need to check his back. We're going to have whoever's holding C spine on their count, so I hold C spine. I want to log roll the patient, so on three. One, two, three. Going to check the Patient's back, back of the head for decap BTLS crepitation, checking the neck. I'm going to come down and check the patient's back or thorax for decap BTLS crepitation. Any step offs, we're also going to look for an exit wound. There's nothing noted. I'm going to make a note of it. Check the patient's buttocks. I'm going to look for any rectal bleeding and the back of the legs for any decap BTLS crepitation. Now we're, we're going to insert the long board. Spines count, we'll roll the patient back. One, two, three. We'll secure the patient to the backboard, middle, bottom, top, legs, head. Not to worry about that. Next thing we're going to do is manage any secondary injuries. No secondary injuries. Then we will reassess this patient every five minutes because he is an unstable patient. I'm done with this station.